Hey guys, Ryan Gill here with Hunt Primitive, where we entertain, educate, inspire, and on this video we're going to be doing a complete work through on building your own quiver for all your primitive archery needs. So we're going to bring you in close, show you a step-by-step -step in this video. Now, if you want to build your own quiver, you're looking for supplies, we'll tell you where to get that stuff. Uh, there's some tools that aren't going to be included, but we do have kits available at HuntPrimitive.com where we're going to send you the leather and a deer antler button, a punch to punch all the holes for lacing and all the artificial sinew that you need to stitch it up, and then also step-by-step -step instructions as well. So not only will you have this video to refer back to, but you'll have uh, paper instructions with drawings and also measurements just to make your life really, really easy. And at the end of it, you'll be able to make a quiver that looks pretty much just like this with or without the fringe. You can make some adjustments as you go, but either way, you're going to have a good quiver that lasts you a long time. So, let's bring you on in and let's get started on this build. Alright, first step here in the instructions is I've got a straight edge here. A yardstick works really good. I've got a metal one because I do it all the time and I don't want to cut it. And then a razor knife of some sort. And, obviously, your leather. Now, the table I'm working on is one of these all plastic fold-out tables and I actually cut right on the table because it's one of my work tables so you will need a surface to cut on uh, these do work great but do not use your wife's kitchen table or you'll be in big trouble because you're gonna be running a lot of knife marks I don't know if you can see all that back here from where I cut all the time now this particular piece of leather I chose it because it has a few issues and that's what this video is gonna really be able to cover especially where maybe some of the instructions don't. So in the instructions we even show you know the possibility of you know there's going to be some holes but normally they're on the outside but once in a while you get some that are kind of here on the inside and we would of course never send out a piece of leather that still didn't have uh, lots of real estate for making a quiver. But this one has two slight holes, one right here, they're not even enough to get your finger through uh, but we don't really want them in the quiver. It's not going to hurt the quiver in the least, but we still don't want them in there anyway because we have good clean leather. So let's go ahead and use uh, all the good pieces. And I'm going to show you cutting the straps out where in the instructions you're going to notice that we just cut the straps right off the top and keep going. And in this situation there probably is enough to do that, but we want to preserve enough material to make sure that we have, uh, again, enough room for the body of the quiver before we cut the straps out as well. So it's just covering a little bit of problem solving. So that's why it will differ slightly from the instructions. Now, the leather that we're working with here is split bison hide. And so it's basically suede on both sides and it's a little more soft and pliable than if it was not split and it was whole, it would be very thick. Obviously bison hide is quite, quite thick and then quite heavy. So this stuff is perfect. And the reason that this is my absolute go-to is because unlike deer hide or elk hide, it doesn't have the stretch. It's got a tiny bit of stretch, but compared to deer skin or deer leather, you can really stretch the stuff. So then what happens is if you make straps from it uh, for your quiver, then your straps will just stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and drive you nuts. And that's one of the reasons that I absolutely love this is it's not going to stretch around on you very much at all. So now with all that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by cutting a straight line about as far up as I can and I'm just going to hold this down and follow the straight edge okay and when it doesn't reach the rest of the way you just slide it down line it right back up and then finish your cut just like that if you have a spot let's go ahead and grab our, our scissors too you're going to need some pretty good scissors and then here that was just the seam of the table it didn't cut and uh, these are just Fiskars scissors brand new and I only use them for leather so, alright, so now we've got a straight edge here on the back. 
and now what we can start doing is just folding for size. So right now I've got plenty, absolutely plenty of room um, before this hole for the quiver. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is lay this right back out and I'll do it over here again so maybe you can see it a little closer. And I want to make sure that the, the leather is not, now that I've moved it, it's not completely contorted and worked around. And there we go. So I use the straight edge as kind of an eyeball to re-straighten it. And then my straps, I usually go about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. And right now, I basically just eyeball it. I put about, oh, maybe at a three-eighths of an inch on the other side of my uh, straight edge. Now, I don't, it doesn't have to be an exact measurement, but I don't measure absolutely everything except for the most important points because it doesn't matter to me if the straps are a little bit narrower on one quiver than the next, but realistically they're pretty much exactly the same every time I do them because I do it all the time. Cut that one. We want these completely full length because we want the, stra the straps to be as long as they possibly can. So there we go. So that's one strap. Now one thing to also keep in mind is most of the time this leather is plenty heavy to just make a strap per the thickness of the leather. Okay. Once in a while you may get a, a thinner piece or it's got a thinner edge and if that's the case what you want to do is choose the side of the leather that's the thickest to cut to make your strap out of and save the thinnest side for either scrap or the bottom side of the quiver. But your thickest leather, and, both, and this is all pretty much equal, uh, is going to be best to use for the straps. Now, if you get into a situation where you do need, I'm going to go ahead and set my straps off to this, uh, my straps off to the side. If you do need to double this over, then what I suggest doing is coming up about three inches and making a cut. And then what you'll do is you'll fold the other way so the color matches you'll fold it and glue it with the glue that we're going to show later. So kind of keep this in mind. If you ever decide that you really need doubled up straps, then what you'll do is just fold it in half and you're going to glue all of this and then put a board over top of it, put some weight on it and let it dry and you'll have a doubled over strap and that'll be all you need. If you want to punch and stitch the entire thing, that's up to you too. You can absolutely do that, but we're not covering that in this one. But what I am going to do is show you on this side the same process. Notice I didn't jump right down here with this cutout for a strap because now our strap would just be really short. We could still use this for lacing and such later, but for now, right there is good. Finish that off. Clean up the little spots that it didn't go all the way through. That happens sometimes. Perfect. All right, so we'll save this and we'll use this for lacing in a bit. And then I'll go ahead and I'm going to cut another strap right now. And you can cut the straps out with scissors as well. However, your, your straight edge line and a razor blade is going to give you your cleanest edges for your straps. So now we've got a couple of nice straps. In fact, now that I'm looking at the two of them that I cut, I actually like the, the ones on this side of the leather better. We can still use this one. So we're just going to set it aside, and I've got plenty of material here yet for another strap before we get to this hole, and otherwise this is just going to be unused leather. So what I'm going to do, because I prefer this side of the leather, I'm going to go ahead and cut one more strap.
All right, we're working around trying to find a good angle for you to be able to see this. I want you to be able to see it from the way that I see it because that's how you're going to see it when you build it. If I put the camera on the other side, then it's uh, going to be building everything upside down. And speaking of upside down and backwards, if you wanted to wear this on the left side of your body, we're building one to wear on the right side. If you want to build one to wear on your left side, all you're going to do is do all of this stuff in reverse and you'll have a left-sided quiver. But overall, they're pretty much interchangeable with the exception of the pocket. So anyway, now as I back up here, and I'm going to try to show you how this is going to work. We're going to take, here's our little holes up here that we are trying to avoid. And so they're up kind of out of the way. So this is what the leather looks like when you're done. This is the inside. You can use either side. That's what I love about uh, this leather that we use is the one side is a little bit lighter, the other side's a little bit darker, so if you want one that's lighter color, use this side. If you want the darker side, use the darker side. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to fold it up, and this side being the tail, this side being the throat, I like the throat to be a little, like slightly wider, maybe by a half an inch, than the tail. And it doesn't have to be, that's just a stylistic preference of mine, and uh, typically you're going to be shooting for, I would say roughly, I think our instructions say four and three quarters inches. I really don't ever measure them. I just eyeball it because I've built so many of them. But for that sake, I'll go ahead and measure it. And that is uh, about an eighth inch off of four and three quarters inches. So that was pretty good. And then over here on this end, you'd be looking at more like four and a quarter. And we were pretty much right on the money. So now I'm going to take a pen. You don't want to draw along this whole thing because you're going to be fighting a pen mark the whole time. But go ahead, straighten everything out as much as you can. And I want you to put just a little dot, a little dot, just two or three, maybe four. And I mean just little dots. Now you can fold this back, get our instructions out of the way so we don't need those right now. And now we're going to lay the straight edge down right along those dots. And we're going to trust the dots that we made, and if you did it properly, they should all line up perfectly fine. Now, if you have one that's slightly off, you can double check, but remember, the straight edge is going to give you a straighter edge than your eyeball, or even the other side of the leather that's not quite as straight. Go ahead and trim this. To length, just like that. Trim ups wherever she's still sticking. Perfect. And this side I can just finish right out like that. All right, this piece we'll save it for later. We're going to need some more of these pieces, but not right now. Here's the main body of our quiver. I'll slide it down this way for you now. What you're going to be wanting to do is look and see, we got a cutout over here, right? You can see, I'll bring that better to you. So it's not straight across. So really what you want to do is you want to be able to take this and cut it pretty much straight across. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect yet, we can trim it in just a second. Let's go ahead and get that piece knocked off, save this one again later. We might make our pocket out of this one. Now when you fold this back together, you'll, in line it all up, you'll know how far off your throat cut was. Let me slide it here so you can see it. So if you can see that at all there, we're only, I mean, just a teeny tiny amount, not enough to really even worry about, but come in just trim that edge. Boom, there we go. So now it should line up perfectly. Now what we're going to do is fold this back so it makes a cuff. Just like that. Alright, so now with our cuff back in place, and that's roughly going to be about, I don't know, three inches or so. So that's, yep, right about three inches, which looks good. Go ahead and straighten quiver out, make sure it lays nice, there's nowhere that needs trim, that looks pretty good. So overall I usually shoot for about 28 inches before I start making uh, any sort of other cuts or anything. 
Uh, what you're going to want to do, and I'll slide this over for the tail end, if you want fringe on the back, you want to leave it a little bit long. Now, there is another, if you ever got into a situation where, hey, you made a cut or you just simply didn't have enough leather to make your fringe, one of the things you can do later, which we won't be doing on this one, is take a piece of scrap like this and you'll basically sandwich it on the inside between the two pieces and stitch this and you can add a piece to add the back fringe if you want. We have enough here so we don't need to do that. Now what I do normally do is again run about 28 inches from the throat and right about here we're really kind of cutting a little bit short on the fringe for where I want it. So to me it's easier just to make the quiver just a little bit shorter because I usually run between 27 to 28 inches. So I can rob a little bit that way, or we can do, take the cuff, and we can actually shorten the cuff just a little bit. So we can make it maybe, you know, two, two and a half inches, two and a quarter inches. So that's the fun part about this, is being able to work it to where it works for you and what you like. And then actually, just one thing here is too, once you decide where you want the cuff, fold it over, just put a little dot underneath where the cuff is going to touch. So you do want it to cover up. So just remember, you don't want a blue line on your finished quiver. And then, lay your straight edge down. So that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a dot up here and right down here at the bottom where it folds I'm going to put another dot, but this one, instead of coming straight down, I like to angle back ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be very much, but to me it always looks a little bit better if you do that. And then, switch sides here for you. I take this side, because when you fold back the cuff, it folds back the lighter colored leather. like that and so if I want the tail fringe to match then I use the inside for that now see once this is folded over now we can just go ahead and cut this little piece out just like that and now this will be fringe later, but not yet. Don't be in a rush to cut your fringe, not time yet. So now our quiver is pretty much laid out with the exception of the pocket. So let's go ahead and lay our pocket out and then we can start putting this thing together. All right, so one of the scraps, actually this I think is the one we cut off the tail end, is gonna be perfect for, looks like making a pocket. Again, if you want to lay, trace out some stuff on cardboard first, or however you want to do it, it's perfectly fine. I pretty much eyeball my pockets as well. And then, after I get one side cut, then I simply fold it over. And cut out the other side to match. Then before I finish it off, I open it back up to bevel that edge back in. And right there is just about an absolute perfect little pocket piece. Just completely eyeball it out until I do it all the time, right? So instructions for that stuff are again in the printed instructions. Now we need another piece to uh, make a flap. However, that piece is a little pilly looking if that makes sense. So what I am going to do, I want to take a section out of here that is a little less pilly than that. And I'm just going to cut the corner off. And now what we're going to do is do this, lay our pocket right down on top of this piece of leather. And we'll trace, not a big full trace, but I do like little dots all the way around it. And then remember, just cut not on the dot so you see pen marks, but just on the inside so you cut them out. And that should just, just make it a perfect match 
to your first one. And don't forget to do the top side as well. So we're going to cut out two of these and we want them to be just exactly the same. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got our two pockets. One is going to be the pocket. One we're going to put and make like this and it's going to be the flap. See how that works? Alright, so now what we'll do is you can bring out instructions. Now pocket placement. What's actually going to be more important than your pocket placement within itself is going to be your strap placement. So that's why we've written this stuff down to make it really easy for you. One of the things that people really like to do, I've seen while they're making quivers, is they like to put their strap up here and then the other one all the way in the very, very back of the quiver because that looks good to them when they stand back and look at it. But then what happens is when you put the arrows in the quiver, the balance of the quiver is now off because you have a lot of weight sticking out in the front of the quiver. So now all the time when you're walking with this, it starts nose diving and eventually it starts dumping arrows out of your quiver and it's really annoying. So what we do is we place the straps off balance for when the quiver is empty, but it will be balanced when the quiver has arrows in it. So that's very, very important. And then those measurements are in here as well. So it kind of gives you an idea. It takes the guesswork out of it. And so, oh, whoop, lost half of my instructions. It's all right. So then what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and take my ruler and lay it down. And I will go ahead and just follow the directions as per is listed here, which should work out really good. And just a little dot, because we're gonna cut the straps, but we're, we're gonna put the straps, but we're not cutting them yet. All we're doing is making marks so we can split center to fit the pocket correctly. So it's all about planning out ahead of time. There and right there. Now double check, obviously. And what you can do is simply take your straps and lay over top of those. That looks like it should balance quite nicely. You'll notice again that the back is a little bit longer than the front is. And we do that on purpose. Now, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna split the difference between these two lines. So you're looking, now it's 13 inches. So six and a half inches is on center. I don't need to put a dot here, but I'm just gonna slide this right to where that's centered perfectly between those. Now on the pocket placement, it needs to be down from the top because we're gonna put stitching across here. You don't wanna end up stitching across the top of your pocket, obviously. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dot in this corner, very, very small, slightly underneath the leather. And that is now showing me where the pocket is going to sit. So, first thing we need to do is take care of this pocket. So, I have, this is E6000. This is a good glue to pick up. You can pick it up just about anywhere. Don't get it on anything you don't want glue on. And then, obviously, remember, do not put glue along the top seam of your pocket. And you are going to do a very thin, a very thin line. You don't want a bunch of excess to squeeze out because if it squeezes out the sides, you're going to notice it. And you do not have to glue your pocket down. You can just stitch it, but this will make your life a little bit easier, and that's why I do recommend it. So just a little bit of glue on that, and then be careful picking it up and laying it down. And we are going to set it right on those two marks. And boom, that'll be done. Make sure there's no glue on our hands. We want to squish this down. Work it around a little bit. That should be just about perfect. And we're going to let this dry a few minutes. But also what we're going to do is while we're here, we're going to go ahead and glue the top piece of our pocket down. So we want to look for 
proper alignment and all we want to do is overlap it just this tiny amount as you can see here and so in then doing that um, you don't want to glue both of them together so not yet anyway and you'll know why so put a dot on the inside so now you know where your pocket placement is the easier or the sooner you glue this stuff down the better honestly in the build you don't have to glue the flap down right now you can glue it later but it is easier just to do it all at once and remember to do it where it faces up upside down so this way when you close it then the colors will be matched so now with that in place and drying our pocket dry now I'm going to come back up to the flaps uh, or the where we turn back for the cuff right here and the alignment looks good not on the inside we're not gluing anything on the inside yet so pick up a flap and put a dot of glue there and then on the back side we're going to do the same thing this will make sure everything is really held into place it doesn't walk around on us we don't really make any mistakes line all of this up give it a good squish to work that glue in and now let it dry now the important thing is is you need to be able to take this whole thing and notice there is no glue holding uh, any of this together right now we need to be able to access the inside of this quiver so we're gonna let that stuff dry and then we're gonna come back in about uh, 30 minutes or so and we'll continue on from there all right, so now we can take I take a board to usually sit on the ground when I do it. You want to open it up. If you punch the holes while it's closed, you're going to punch out the other side. Obviously, you don't want to do that. So that's why it was important to make it so we could open the quiver back up. And we're going to take a hammer and then the little punching nail that I do include with the, the kit. And it's just a nail that's been sharpened. Not everybody's got a grinder can easily sharpen one. So easy for me to include that. And on the board, I stick, I uh, put the holes maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, three-eighths of an inch to a half an inch apart, making sure that I poke all the way through. We'll get these punched, and then we'll sew them on. All right, with these punched, now I punch the lid or the flap as well. Now this part isn't necessary for the flap to function, but I like the way that it looks finished off with the same stitching around the perimeter as the pocket. So if you want to punch and put a decorative strip, a stitch on the pocket, now is a good time to go ahead and punch that as well. All right, now I took about a three foot piece of artificial sinew and I'll lace it through either a lacing needle. I use taxidermy needles. It doesn't matter what kind of needle you use as long as you can thread it through and fit it through the hole. So now I start from the top corner and on the inside and that keeps the knot kind of away from the, the arrows and on the inside of the quiver. And I let about oh, three or four inches stick out that side and I go straight just under and over what I believe is called a saddle stitch I'm not positive on that but I'm pretty sure that's a saddle stitch just in one side out the other and we're gonna do that all the way till we get to the other side and then I'll show you coming back so it should look like that. Right. I know we're upside down here for you. So here's the last stitch going through. And now I'm going to continue, but I'm just going to go right back through this, through the hole at the bottom of the one before it. See that? So we just came out of this one and we're going back down through the same hole and then we're gonna up and down the whole way back to the place that we started. 
So, after you get a few of them started, they should be looking like this. Alright, we're about to finish off the very last stitch. And you'll notice that three feet didn't give us a lot of slack at the end. So make sure you do stick with about three feet because the last thing you want to do is run yourself to where you don't have enough to work the needle up and out. Now, it's completely stitched on. Looks pretty good. And on the back side, it looks like this. This will be the inside of the quiver. And here's our two little pieces. You don't want to yank it so tight that it wrinkles your leather, but just to have all your your uh, st stitches snugged. So just do a, a quick knot there, and I'm going to trim these edges down with leaving a little bit of slack. And now we'll actually take a lighter. We're just going to burn those edges a little bit lick your finger and smush it down and then it's probably strong enough just as is it doesn't hurt my feelings just to hit it with a tiny bit of super glue so there you go the pocket is now done so now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and stitch the lid the same exact way and of course I do it on the inside so when it's flapped over then you can't see the knot did the stitch on the pocket as well so this way when the whole thing's put together it should look pretty nice so now what we're going to do is we're going to lay the quiver back down this time we'll move the board open the quiver up make sure everything fits it should nothing should have changed we didn't do anything to change anything and I'm going to take our pen and put just tiny dot I want it underneath. I don't want to see, but it's going to give me a mark to go by. I want a couple dots underneath. Just so I know. And then we're going to open the quiver up. And just take our E6000. Now on the back side, this is going to really help preserve your stitchings. Is You don't want it to squeeze out, but you want to make sure that you really get a good glue line there. That way you don't actually have to worry about your points cutting your uh, stitching so the glue is really going to help and that's why I glue both sides of that as well just a thin line and then just along the top you don't need to do both sides along the top just a little bit and this also you don't have to glue but I do prefer the glue because should a a stitching come loose your quiver won't just immediately fall apart so it's just an added measure of safety and I'll glue that all the way to the end and then of course being careful not to get glue on the throat you don't want to glue the, the throat of it shut so now go ahead and fold that over being careful of your glue, you don't just lay good clean leather into it. Align it all up. And you'll notice too that a lot of times you can see how it's got like a bend to it right now. You want to make sure you take all that out as you work this around because you want it to dry and be straight. If you actually let that glue dry with that bend in it, it will want to bend like that all the time. So work that glue line just a little bit make sure there's no wrinkles anywhere and once that is glued down now I'm going to take my board and I set it right across the seam hammer it down and then I actually usually have a couple like 30 pound uh, dumbbells I stick right on here you don't have to it'll be fine just with the board but I do that just to get a good glue line at least a little bit better glue line but this will be fine and we're gonna let this dry about an hour then we're gonna come back and we're gonna punch it and stitch it up all right it should be dried up and ready to go lay it out and go ahead and punch all the holes 
just like uh, we did for the pocket. Same distance, make sure they pop all the way through. And we'll do that all the way from the tail end and up to the pocket over the pocket seam. So you're going to have to go through three pieces of leather there instead of two. And then through the throat over here, which again will be through about four uh, pieces of leather. So that's another reason it helps to have everything glued together because trying to stitch and line up four holes on stuff that's not uh, lined up good is very difficult. And as you can see, I just had a couple little extra edges there I wanted to trim off, so that's ready to go. So that's what I'm going to do right now. You don't need to watch me punch every single hole, but I'm going to punch this and then we'll stitch it up. Then the body of the quiver will be finished. I'm going to take about eight feet. Sounds like a lot, but that's about really what you want. About eight feet of the artificial sinew. And then you can double it back once you pull it through the needle. You can double it back a good little way so you don't have to pull all eight feet through every single hole uh, while you stitch. Now, I start from the back side corner. That's just my preference. So the bottom of the quiver, as you see it here, on the back side. So this would be the side that's not going to be seen as much. And that's where I'll start because when we cut all the way back, that's where we'll tie the knot. So, now one way to do this to speed it up a little bit, go ahead and pull it through, is don't cut your fringes yet because your fringes will get constantly caught up in your um, stitching. So once I pull one or two through, I will, sometimes finding the the hole is a little difficult. There it is. It's a little odd to see it flipping back and forth with the flap. Is once I get it started, I'll go ahead and I'll lace two or three of these. So this way you're saving some of your stitching pull time. So you can see I don't have to pull it all the way through. If you don't want to, you don't necessarily want to get like a ton of them, but enough now you can slide them all through at once and you can see how much faster that's going to go as opposed to pulling every stitch like this and then again like this. Quiver is all sewn up ready to go so that's approximately where that's going to be. What I recommend doing is taking your flap and cutting a nice little vertical line, just big enough that you'll be able to pass the button through it. Like that. Now lay the button or the flap down where you want it. And then pick the antler up and set it right down where it should go. And then a little piece of artificial sinew. And I don't punch the holes on these, I just use my needle. But you could have punched them ahead of time too, I suppose. Now, I get that one started, but I just pull it all the way through. That way I can just push the needle back coming this way because I want my loose ends inside the pocket. So I can tie it off inside there. And then I'll just lace this around all two or three times. This stuff's pretty pretty heavy so it's strong. Two times is sufficient. And then we'll tie it off, cut it and burn it on the inside of the pocket. And then the pocket will be done. You can easily button your pocket. Perfect, just like that. All right, with that done, now we're ready to cut the fringes. And I like to go pretty thin. You'll get a, a feel for it. Like I said, sometimes I like to have a little extra length. 
to these, but sometimes you just work with what you got. And if you cut them thinner, then you will notice that they have a slight curl to them. If you cut them thick, they just kind of lay straight. But you can already see how these ones want to curl. And uh, honestly, when it kind of hangs down, it gives it a much better look, in my opinion. So I try to go fairly thin until I just don't want them. I mean, if we pulled it hard, it'll rip the fringe and bust it off. But you'll kind of get the hang of it. So anyway, take a few minutes and cut all these fringes up. And then we'll be ready for the next step. All right, next step, I typically take an arrow shaft that didn't make it great, and you're gonna slide it inside the quiver, but all the way at the very top. So this is the stiffening rod. It's gonna keep it holding its shape rather well. And that's also what we're gonna attach the straps to. Now, before we do anything specifically with that, we're gonna take that very first strap that we cut, and if you didn't have an extra strap, that's when you just take your scraps and make some. And I'm gonna cut them all. Let's say that looks pretty good. I'll do that piece. We're gonna take two of these. And what we wanna do, I like to cut triangles at the top. That's kind of my style. These are gonna be strap fringes. So I'll make one of them here for you to see. But you don't fringe them all the way to the top because you gotta you gotta punch some holes. And then we'll... Okay, so I've got a hole punch, and I knock out four holes. This is why these hole punches are very much working. So you're looking at creating something that looks like this with the fringes. We need two of those. They'll hang right there, and so we're gonna make the other one quick and then I will uh, show you at least how I guess there's nothing incredibly special about it but if you uh, go ahead and hit your now if you wanted to do it with your nail I got my board down here you're essentially just going to go ahead and pop your hole in nice and deep and then back around here to you you're just going to have to sit and work the nail back and forth to start widening these holes out. So it's a little bit more difficult, it's not as nice, it does take longer, but if you don't own a hole punch, keep working it through until you can push that nail all the way through. But since we have a, a fair amount of holes to do, and I have a hole punch, and that's what I recommend you use, unless you're just going to do one of these and that's it then spend the time, work it with a nail or something else to punch a hole and you'll be good shape. So I do like to oftentimes cut these at a little bit of an angle too before I fringe them. So let me fringe this one up and then we'll, we'll assemble this thing. All right, so with our stiffening rod in place, I said you're just gonna have to come up with your own stiffening rod. A dowel rod is the easiest thing to go with or if you have an arrow shaft that didn't make the cut, something like that. Here's one of the straps. And you can see I cut the, punched the holes in that already. So here's our two little lines that we did at the beginning of the build when we were laying out for the pocket. What I'm doing is I'm working that uh, stiffening rod up all the way up to bottom out against that seam. Now basically right, not necessarily on the dots, but at the dots, right smack on top of that stiffening rod use the stiffening rod as a backstop for your knife and now you will need to cut a slot there and then flip it over being mindful that you're cutting in the same exact place and you're going to cut a slit here as well make sure it's defined out goes all the way through the leather now you're going to take the strap and brighten you up here just a little so you hopefully can see a little bit more what I'm doing. 
we're going to take the strap through the hole on the back side underneath the stiffening rod. Okay, it takes a second to shove it through to where you can get a hold of it with your finger. There we go. And then pull it up through. So this way, now you can see what it's doing, is it's sandwiched that stiffening rod between the strap and the top stitching of the quiver. And then, I like to make this fairly tight, but not enough to really distort the top. However, that's going to lay in I punch my four holes on this side. Just like that. Pull out those pieces. So that'll lace together, and then this will sit right on top of that. So now with that done, we need to go back and find a good strap, a good quality piece of spare material, like this. And we're going to cut, might as well just go ahead and cut three of them now. And you want them about 16 or so inches long. I just kind of like to go a little extra long and then trim them later as I see fit. But you want to make sure you use good solid pieces of leather for this, not some of the more pilly edges that aren't as sturdy a leather. Okay, so there's two, and I'll just cut one more while I'm here. Now, we'll go ahead and take one of our strips, and this is really explained, I think, really well in the uh, instructions that come with it, but we're using the two bottom holes. We're going to pull this through about even, and I'll show this to you in one second here. Okay, let's see if you can see what we're doing there. See what I did? So I did... And now when I put them, I'll go ahead and lace them straight through and then on the back side they'll make an X so I'll take this one and cross it over put it in this hole and then opposite with the other hole and then back through and we'll show you finishing that out. So you don't have to try to shove them through all at once leave a little bit of slack and get them started. If you try to just push them all through three holes at once, you're not going to have much luck. Now, you can suck it up tight. And then here you go again on the back side. Now you can come straight through the top, but I prefer to do an X in there. I think it holds just a little bit better. So we're going to do the same thing, one hole at a time. Pull it through. And suck that one through but remember I didn't tell you this before but leave enough that you can get about your finger through don't suck it up completely tight yet and this is going to be a stronger uh, fit than trying to stitch it anyway and then it's easily removed later if you need to so now these two pieces are going to go th down through the hole that we created. And now from the back side you can just start sucking up the slack and really tightening all of it out. So just the same way that you put them in. Pull the slack. I got one in here, it's a little bit twisted. It's not going to hurt anything, but it doesn't look as good, so we're going to fix that. There we go. not too bad. So now that's good and tight and it will usually hold the way it is but I don't mind doing just a, a one quickie knot right there. So now we have one strap that's completely attached and we'll do exactly the same thing with the other strap and I'll walk you through it just super fast again. I won't show you the whole process but remember go ahead and cut your 
your slits on both sides. Feed it in under the strap or under the stiffening rod and out, and then punch your holes. This piece goes on, strap it on. You'll have two straps, but neither will be connected, and then we'll connect them in just a minute. All right, so the quiver is all put together now, and I have the other ends of our straps. So I'll go ahead and triangle those off. Now, in some cases, if you are punching holes by hand, but you have enough strap and you don't want to lace them together, but if you have enough strap, you can take the two and tie them into a knot at whatever length is going to fit you, and boom, you can be done. So if you don't have a hole punch and it's a pain in the butt punching those holes, tie them and then there you go, they're connected. But if you want to make the strap adjustable, like I do for these ones that uh, we sell at HuntPrimitive.com, that way they fit a wide variety of people, then all you're going to be doing is punching the holes in your straps periodically and then lacing them together exactly the same way that we laced these together. And so I have my own little method of making straps adjustable, but you can use your imagination. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. Just as long as you can lace them together. And I usually do a series of short uh, incremental holes on one strap and then on the other one I space them out and then that way I can take this and I can slide it to make it shorter or I can skip to a whole new one. So this way I'm not doing holes all the way up and down these straps. So I'm going to punch these holes and then lace it together and this quiver build is going to be done. However, before you run off, if for some reason your straps are not long enough or you need longer straps, then now is the time you can make an extra strap, like this is the one in the first one that we cut, and now you can make it as an extension. By taking this strap and doing the same lacing technique, hook these two together and you just made an extension, and now this one can hook to this side. So use your imagination on the strap, all you ever have to do is hold it together with these little strapping pieces, little lacing pieces, and uh, you'll have a good quiver that'll last a very, very long time. Alright guys, thanks for following along today. So there it is. All finished out. Looking good. Wears nicely. We're ready to put all our arrows right in there. And it'll be balanced without arrows where it wants to lean back slightly and you put arrows in it. And it should balance just about perfectly for you. So, thanks for joining us again today. Remember to check out the kits or even finish quivers. If you watch it and you're like, nope, not interested anymore. If you don't want to do it, you can order finished quivers at huntprimitive.com or the uh, kit comes with the leather and a couple of the tools, but of course you will need a few other things. So hey, thanks for following along and we'll catch you on whatever next adventure we get into.